Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for this privilege to be here, God, on the, uh, the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, Father. And God, what better place to be than here in your house, God, to lift up your name, to be exalted, Father. And God, I just thank you for this little thought, God, that you've given me. And I pray, Lord, that uh, it's just a blessing, Father, this morning, that it gives us a reminder, God, of exactly... Um, why it is that we celebrate God Christmas, and uh, we thank you, Father, for the precious gift of your Son and the precious gift of our salvation, Father. I pray, Father, for every family that's represented here, every family in our church, God, those who are unable to make it, God, I pray that you'll bless them as well. God, I pray that you'll bless each of us as we uh, travel from uh, home to home and place to place, uh, God, today to celebrate with our families. God, I pray that we're able to be a light that shines for you. That, God, that we can be that light that reminds everybody of Christ today. Allow each one of us, Father, the opportunity to be a blessing to someone today, Father, that you will receive the honor and the glory for it. And bless all of us who are uh, fighting illnesses and um, various things, being under the weather. Lord, I just pray, Father, that you'll touch and comfort each one. Uh, God, that you'll uh, bless our church. God, that People will drive by and, God, just see your light shining from here today. Now, Lord, bless all those who are lost and undone. Every request that may be on anybody's heart today, Father, we pray that you'll supply that need as you see fit. Be with us throughout this service, Lord. Allow this message, God, to, uh, uh, to touch that heart, Father, that it needs to touch. Forgive us where we fail you. We ask these things in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. All right. If you got your Bibles, you'll turn to the book of Luke, chapter 7. Y'all thought I was going to say Luke chapter 2, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 7. So, the thought that I have this morning, and I want you to think about this, is it's not what's under the tree, but who's on the tree. It's not what's under the tree, but who's on the tree. And I was sifting through some things, and, and uh, I saw this, um, this little statement or, or story, whatever it is, it says uh, a television interviewer was walking the streets of Tokyo at Christmas time. Much as in America, Christmas shopping is a big commercial success in Japan. The interviewer stopped one young woman on the sidewalk and asked, what is the meaning of Christmas? Laughing, she responded, I don't know. Is that the day that Jesus died? There was some truth in uh, her answer to what it says. So the thing is that that's what Christmas has become about. Not only in the world, but here in America, where we should definitely know better, since how this country was built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. But what it finished out is that there's some truth in that statement. And there is some truth in that statement, because what's happened over the years is that people have allowed Jesus to die on the day that we celebrate his birth. See, people have made so much about what's stuck under that tree, or what they're taking off of the shelves at the store, what we're opening up out of those gifts that people give us. We've put so much focus and so much thought on that that we forgot why we celebrate it. And then every now and then we'll have an image that reminds us of Jesus laying in the manger, and that was a gift sent here from heaven. God came down here as man and laid as a baby in a manger. And we see that and we, we know the preciousness of a baby anyway, but especially the preciousness, preciousness of, of God as a baby. But the true gift came when he hung on that tree. And I want to look at that for just a minute. But here in Luke 7, I'm going to read a few verses here, starting with verse 36. Luke 7, 36. You found your place, say, God is good? All the time. God is good. Amen. Luke 7, verse 36. 
And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. He went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, that's a kind, politically correct way of saying she was a harlot. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with, her, with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, You notice that the Pharisee didn't say that, he thought it. But then the next verse says, And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five uh, 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with anointment, or with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. So, to whom much is given, much is expected, right? Or required. That's one of the, the things that he says later. But here he says, To who is forgiven the most, they will love the most. And I jokingly the other night referred to us as the island of misfit toys here at this church because we've all had our own issues in one way or another. This church family has been touched by various illnesses and addictions and um, just sins of, of many different types, including me. But when you look around and you think, and you think about the, the testimonies that we hear here, and, and uh, you know, I, Renee sharing her testimony and letting us know um, everything that, that she had been through, but yet she was forgiven. And I know everything that I've been through, yet I've been forgiven. I know what my family has been through, yet we've been forgiven. I know what a lot of you have been through because you've shared with me, and yet you've been forgiven. Not a single one of us sitting here deserving of that forgiveness. But here's the thing I want to point out. This woman came with this alabaster box of this expensive ointment knowing that she had lived a life of sin and that she was in uh, living a life of sin as things went. She made her living with her body. But it wasn't, so many people focus on that alabaster box and that ointment. But let me tell you the key to a Christmas gift is nothing to do with the actual gift. I don't care what it is that you give. I may not have as much to give as I would like to. I would love to shower these two and, and my daughter with everything. I would buy them cars. I would buy anything. I would love to be able to do that. But I can guarantee you that even the smallest gift that I give any of them, I give it with love. And you see, she came to him with love. And she came to him with fear. 
not being afraid, but a reverence. And she knew how special he was, and she gave everything that she had, and she bowed down before him, and she cleaned his feet and kissed his feet and wiped it uh, with her hair. She put the ointment on his head. She anointed him with something that was considered precious, while Simon could sit and watch and think if he only knew. But rather than doing something from the heart, Simon wanted him to come and eat with him only for what he could do for him. And see, that's where we go wrong with Christmas. We wake up in the morning and we run and we're so excited about what's under the tree only because of what it means to us or what gift we're going to receive. Man, I, I, I get more excited, and, and we do as, as adults when we have children that we're giving gifts to, we get excited about watching them. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about when we look at the, the material, worldly Christmas side of things, the shopping and all that, seeing the excitement on his face, seeing the excitement on Caitlin's face when she was little, that was what it was all about to us. I mean, we, and, and Christy's very traditional in a lot of the things that she does, and she loves to make Christmas just very special, and, and you know, the, the songs that we play, and uh, we got the camcorder set up, and we're videoing, and there was... Um, you know, we always made sure that we focused on making sure that uh, uh, everything was traditional. I mean, we left Santa his cookies out, and he always leaves a note, and we like that. And, and you know, and, and you know, so Santa appreciated our tradition as well. He would come and, and make sure that everything that we had uh, was laid out there. And I know there's, um, you know, churches out there that would frown on that, but you know what? I don't care. That's why people go there and we go here. So, uh, but here's the thing is, you know, so it was always, you know, it's always so traditional in the, and with us, and, and if you watch any of our videos, I mean, we're in our morning or bed clothes or whatever and drinking coffee and that's, you know, that's us. I saw a commercial the other day, a Mercedes commercial and the parents run and they're waking up the kids, hey, 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 it's Christmas, it's Christmas and they run outside and they get out there and there's this Mercedes and it goes back and it shows the son and the daughter and they're probably Bryson and Monica's age or whatever and DJ's and they're standing there with coffee like this and they're like, the look on their face makes it all worthwhile. You know, and I'm thinking, that's me and Christy. <laughs> you know, but uh, so anyway, but the point is, is that, you know, we, that's what we want. We want that traditional warm feeling Christmas and you know if we had a fireplace we'd have a fire going in it because that would be cool and we will one day but nonetheless um, you know we get wrapped up in that though and we want to see the excitement but the thing it boils down to is that box of alabaster with the ointment inside of it really had no significance no significance if she didn't come to him humbly and take it. If I just came over, she would have said, here, take it. There's, your, there's some ointment, take that. And then she walked off. There would have been no meaning for that. She didn't. She said, here. She got down here. And she, she washed his feet. She cried on his feet. She kissed his feet. She anointed his head with the oil because she loved him. She did every bit of that from here. She did it all from here. It wasn't about giving a gift and leaving. But see, she gave the gift of her heart. It didn't matter what was in that box. Not one bit. Didn't matter what was in that box. So, I encourage you this morning, this evening, you go to your family, and your family brings that box and they open and they hand it to you, and you you open it. No matter what's in that box, what matters is what was expressed when they handed it to you. 
What matters is how we reflect Christ back to them in our appreciation. Not getting called up in how that material item that's in there, no matter how excited we are about it, and there's nothing wrong with being excited about what you get. Nothing wrong with that. But not, not to the point that we allow that to overshadow where that gift came from. And I don't mean Walmart or Macy's. I mean where that gift came from. Now, turn with me over to Luke 23. Verse 39. Remember, it's not about what's under the tree. It's about who's on the tree. And one of the malefactors which hang railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Merry Christmas. Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Merry Christmas. The greatest gift that was ever given was given on that tree. Like this. So when we celebrate, let's make sure that we understand and, and we see the signs. Jesus is the reason for the season and all these things, and that's great. And while Christmas is beautiful and the lights and the trees and and the colors and just everything is beautiful. It's okay to take a minute and just remember that one part that wasn't beautiful. Not from the physical perspective of looking at it. But when you look at it from your heart, it's nothing but beauty. Nothing to do with what's under that tree. All about who's on that tree. What did he tell him? Of whom much is forgiven, there is much love. Can you imagine how much was forgiven from that man just like that? And Jesus could have very easily looked at him and said, Merry Christmas. Could have very easily just said, Merry Christmas. And of course, they didn't celebrate Christmas Day, but because he just gave him the gift of all gifts. And he did it from right there on the tree. So, I hope that's been a blessing to you. I hope it's been a thought that you can carry with you today. And a reminder for each and every gift that we get. Not about the box. Not about what's in the box. It's about what went into handing it to you. And don't forget that.